It's been a hot minute since I last talked about Unordinary. It's actually been a while since I talked about any Unordinary character specifically. The last person I talked about was Blake, and I'm still constantly mentioning John. But it's been more than a year since I talked in depth about characters like Serafina. Since the last time I made a video on her was January 1st of 2020, what? Um, let's hope this channel works out. Anyways, Serafina has gone through a lot of developments since I last made a video on her. But before getting into that newer stuff, we need to re-establish some stuff about Serafina. She starts out the webtoon series as the Ace of Wellston. Serafina's strength is unmatched at the school, and her powers are also very... busted. Time manipulation. She is literally able to rewind, freeze, and maybe speed up? I don't know what she can do. But Serafina is unparalleled in strength, speed, skills, and ability, makes her the strongest female at the school, which would make her the Queen of Wellston. As, you know, Unordinary likes to use the playing card motif. And early on, we do see that she was the Queen. And while Arlo was also in charge, Serafina was basically the number one. Now, there's definitely something you should know about the world of Unordinary. Their ideals and morals are different compared to ours. We can't look at their world with our world's perspective. Sure, yeah, these kids are absolutely brutal towards each other and are constantly destroying school property, but these kids live in a society where the only real thing that matters growing up is strength. How much stronger you are than your fellow classmates. And we hear this from both Cecile and Aizen, how these kids are raised. As we hear from Cecile when talking about John, don't be ridiculous. If he's a high tier, then his parents were as well. They would have raised him better. They would have raised him better. Interesting. Even moving on to what Aizen says, back then, his ability level always hovered around one, with no signs of growth. He was pretty much a cripple. So who knows, maybe his parents gave up and just branded him a failure. Children are brought up with different ideals and morals depending on their ability level. People who have super-powered kids likely teach them different things compared to kids with next to no strength. Stronger kids are likely given more lessons in responsibility, likely more attention is given to them. But on the flip side, they have a lot more expectations placed onto them. We can see this with characters like Arlo and his aunt. How when Arlo was breaking out of the chains of expectation, his aunt was very quick to place him back on. And while we don't get this with Remy's family, we do get this full force with Serafina's. We never really got a lot of Serafina's childhood. All we did get was hearing that she trained a lot as a kid, and a not great mom, a strangely missing father, and a runaway sister. But it takes meeting their runaway sister again to get things going. Why is it you? After disappearing for over five years, how dare you appear in front of me like this? But nothing. You abandoned me. And now you want to walk back into my life as if nothing happened? You left me alone with them. Without letting me know. Not even a goodbye. Did you ever think how mom and dad would react after you ran away? How they would treat me? We don't really know how Serafina's parents were before her sister Lila ran away. But we do hear how it was for Serafina. You know, I finally realized why Lila ran away from here. This place is cold and lifeless. Everything is objective driven. It's unbearable. You always call her a failure. Probably because you don't want to admit that your own actions are to blame for what happens. And we do see that objective driven family life lead to an objective driven lifestyle. As everything Serafina did, she did with a purpose. Her job as Wellston royalty, her domination in Turf War, her top grades, all with purpose. And we see that she never did anything for herself. 
as it takes John, of all people, to convince her to relax for once in her life. I don't know how he managed to drag me along. Maybe it was because deep down, I really wanted to celebrate too. It's so ironic. The first time I ever decided to reward myself was for something imperfect. An A-. minus. I think this is when I began to realize reputation isn't everything. I should focus less on how others perceive me, and more on what makes me happy. Because in the end, I have to live with myself. This leads to the Serafina we'd know now. Turning from the Queen of Wellston, the strongest and most important student, to the Ace of Wellston. A position that never really existed, as Serafina just kind of transcends royalty, being whoever she wants to be, without any expectations or responsibilities. She chooses who she wants to be, and that's how we start the series, as Serafina being her own person, choosing to make herself happy before anyone else. So really, we can only go down from there. Serafina's new title is probably the best representation of her arc, as an ace is both the highest and the lowest card, being able to be stronger than a king but also weaker than a two. And we see this exactly with Serafina, being one of the strongest members of the school, but later on in the series she also loses her ability, causing her power level to plummet to that of a crippled. Which, which is none, it's not a power level. Serafina was always kind of a loose cannon. She always did what she wanted to do, no matter the consequences. And when she was on top, there really wasn't any. She says it herself. They would never get rid of me. Anything she did or wanted to do, she could. No one could challenge her, and the school isn't willing to let her go. Even for, I don't know, an example, maybe, I don't know, reading an illegal book. However, after losing her ability, she no longer has the power to back up her attitude. Which means everyone targeted her, as Serafina fell from power and the social ladder, leading her to end up at the bottom. However, no matter how beaten, broken, or hurt, Serafina always did have friends. Yeah, sure, she had her royal connections, like Arlo, but he's more of a punk than anything else, Remy, who's friendly with everyone, and Blake, who's just kinda distant with everyone. Serafina also learned to connect with her fellow low tiers, but mainly stayed connected with John. Man, John somehow always sneaks his way into unordinary videos, doesn't he? <clears throat> but John's impact literally affects everyone as he's the biggest reason there's change. He's there to make waves, not only in the school, but in literally everyone else. It's very hard to find the person who isn't affected by John. Anyone from Arlo to Remy and Blake to Zeke. And it's especially the point with Serafina. I've already mentioned how John changed her ideas of what's important in life. But John always remained a constant in Serafina's life as she always could rely on him, and John was the person who taught her so much in her life. If I can finish that quote from before, John, you are truly extraordinary. Even as a cripple, you were able to push through others' prejudice and stand up for yourself. Even though you're at the bottom, you can break molds. You're an inspiration. Thank you. You showed me that even the weakest person has something valuable to offer. That no one is worthless. John was incredibly important to Serafina's character. He was the one that showed her that even when she became a crippled, even when everyone was beating her up, John stayed by her side throughout all the struggles and all the difficulties. He was kind of her hope. The one thing that could make waves no matter the strength. He was really the only thing giving her hope. So you can imagine the problems that arise when John really did have powers. And when Serafina finds this out, she breaks down. 
So after all this time, he isn't powerless. What else has he kept from me? What was real and what wasn't? Was everything a lie? You have to understand that John, as a low tier, brought a certain ideal and hope to Serafina. A hope that anyone, no matter the power, tier, strength, or whatever, could still make an impact in the world. And that hope is really what helped Serafina stay... sane. No matter how many people attacked her, no matter how many people trash-talked her, or no matter the difficulties she went through, that idea and hope really kept her motivated. So after Serafina learns that basically the only reason she had hope was a lie, she stumbles a bit, sure. But Serafina chooses to become her own person. She decides to rely on her own strength, on her own hope. Serafina decides to become the person she thought John was. Joining movements like the Safe House, standing up for fellow low tiers, becoming a person who does represent hope for all tiers. And we see in one of the most recent chapters that losing her ability was kind of, maybe if you squint at it, a blessing. No, I think it was all necessary. I feel like I've learned more in the last two months than I ever will. Before, I kept trying to dodge certain responsibilities. But now, I have direction. And I know exactly what I need to change. There's someone I know who is very lost right now. He's lashing out at everyone around him. And he doesn't realize how much he's hurting himself. I want to help him. Serafina is becoming someone she can be proud of. Not someone her family could be proud of. Not someone her friends or someone John could be proud of. Someone she can be proud of. Because at the end of the day, she has to live with herself. It's nice to have other people's validations. It's kind of how we live in our society. It's nice to have people behind you. But Serafina teaches us that you don't need that to be strong. You don't need other people standing behind you to stand up for what's right. You can be the hope when no one else is. You can help people no matter your circumstance. But that's just what I think. What about you? What do you think about Serafina? Leave it in the comments below. But that's all for this week. So... Like always, thank you for watching, and I hope I'll see you next week, where we will be talking about the Queen of Olympus, Hera.